So we're going to go on a deep dive of all of the features within event types and everything that you can configure. So let's get started by dropping into this event type. So we've got the obvious things like the title, the description, the URL, the duration, and the location. Now you can have multiple locations if you wish. So we have quite a few options here. We have, I only have Cal Video installed, but we can have some in-person ones, whether I want to collect the address from the attendee or set an address myself as an organizer. I can also add in a custom link if there's anywhere that you want to direct them to on the web. And um, we can do the same with the phone number, so I can either collect their phone number or they can have mine. So let's go out of this. Uh, we can also allow the person who's booking it to select a duration so we can give them a certain few options. Um, so if I just check that, uh, we can then set some available durations here. So I can do 60 minutes and 90 minutes, um, even choose the, the default duration within that. Um, then we're going to dive into availability. So you can configure your availability here on the left, but this basically lets you choose between different schedules. So I can go on to personal, um, which is obviously going to give me a completely um, much wider set of availability than what my default working hours would be. Then we can go into limits. So limits um, basically uh, lets you control how often you can be booked. So we can do like a before and after event buffer time. So say maybe I need like five minutes to like calm down after a call. Um, you know, after somebody's told me some terrible news, then I can set like 15 minutes afterwards. Um, I can also change the minimum notice so nobody is like just dropping in on my cow link and you know, booking me in 20 minutes time and expecting me to turn up. So I can set that to minutes, hours or days, however you'd like. Now time slot intervals, um, it's kind of similar to these, but works in a different way. So if I wanted to offer, you know, 15 minute slots, uh, 9.15, 10.15, 11.15 and so on, um, you know, you could do like a 60 minute time slot interval. And that's basically gonna be like the total gap between the slots that we offer. Then there's also limit booking frequency. So, you know, obviously I don't want to be overloaded with, with too many calls. You can set how many per day, week, month or year. Um, I'd love to set that to one per year and then just never take another call. But, you know, uh, there is also limit future booking. So you can choose, you know, I want to do 30 business days or calendar days into the future or only allow bookings within a date range. If I'm going to be in a particular country or a conference, you know, between a certain period, um, I might want to, you know, restrict that to only a certain range. Now we're going to an advanced and there's, there's always a lot of things hiding in advanced. Um, so first of all, there's, you can manually select what calendar. So by default, it's going to go into, you know, my regular cow.com calendar. Uh, but also I could put it in my personal Gmail. Um, I could add it to the team calendar or that would be a bit weird for the rest of the team. Um, and there's security and compliance as well. Um, you can also modify the event name. Um, so basically there, if I just want to change like the default quick chat 15 minutes or whatever the event time name is between Bailey and so on. Uh, you can also use variables in there for, you know, different, different bits of data. There's also additional inputs, which is really nice. So if I turn this on, you can basically add almost like forms into your booking. So if I need like more information from somebody prior to a call, you know, like, is there anything particular you'd like to see in this demo? You know, you can give them any of these sort of options. Um, requires confirmation is one of my favorites. It basically requires it so that anybody who books me I now need to accept or reject it before it automatically goes in my calendar. I get a lot of spam bookings and people I don't necessarily want to talk to. Um, and so you can basically require confirmation. And you can also do it as well if you just want confirmation for something with less than so long notice. So rather than necessarily saying, hey, look, I need four hours notice, you could maybe do it so that you only require confirmation for, for less than four hours notice. Um, there's also disabled guests, so you know some people don't want guests because you know they don't like other people, um, and so you can you can turn that on uh, if you wish. There's also hide notes in calendar. Um, once again, if if you just want that to not show up, like everybody has particular reasons as to why they want certain things and don't want certain things. We just give you the flexibility to change that. Um, you can also require additional notes, which is also one of my favorites. As you can see, I've got it turned on. Uh, you know, if somebody books me, generally, I can't remember who you are. You know, maybe you emailed me six months ago. 
I need a bit of context. So, you know, you can require that they add some notes uh, to give you a bit more information about what the call is about. There's also redirect on booking. This is perfect if you want to rickroll somebody after they've gone ahead and booked you. Uh, be aware though, it does warn them that they are being redirected to an external link, uh, you know, for security reasons. Um, there is also private link. Private link is great. If I don't want to give away my cow.com username, uh, say like when I'm going to an event, I can generate a private link and just give somebody like a private link that maybe will expire after a certain amount of times that they use it. Uh, there's also um, seats. So what that means is say I'm hosting a yoga class, which would never happen. Um, and I want, you know, say like five people can join a class and I'm running classes every hour. Seats basically allows you to set like a maximum amount of people that can join in with this class. Um, and you know, obviously you can hide or show each other's attendee information if you wish. Then there's recurring, so you know you can book recurring events with cow.com. That's one of our unique features. Uh, you know, make it repeat every so often for a maximum of however many events. Um, apps is we're not really going to cover much of that. It's basically if you want to add a particular app. So for instance, we could have the Giphy app to to show like a, a GIF. Um, you know, once you've booked it, if you want one of those like generic The Office celebrating GIFs. Uh, and then there's workflows, so I haven't got any workflows that are running at the moment, but we can basically, you know, connect and disconnect any workflows that's needed. Uh, one other thing to cover before we finish off is you can hide links from your profile, which is great if you want some like secret links with extra availability. Then there is also preview your link, basically it's just going to open that in a new tab for you. Uh, copy link to event, embed and delete. If we go into embed, you get three different options. You can either like just embed it as almost like a widget. Uh, you can also have this like pop-up button. So if you've got like some nice portfolio website, you don't want to like blast people with a calendar. You can have this nice, nice little, you know, book me button in the corner. Um, or there is pop-up via element click. It's really nice if you just want to like tie it to some JavaScript on click function. Um, and it's a really nice way to integrate it with your site. So that covers everything. Thank you very much.